The joys of being married to someone where you both have the same passion. So um, when I met Andrew and uh, heard that he wanted to be in full-time ministry, I was excited and wanted to join him in that um, because I guess I had also been struck with that there's no other work as important as bringing the gospel to people and being part of growing God's kingdom. Um, so being able to do that together and support him in doing that is very exciting. That's a joy. Um, I think one of the tensions there, though, is uh, there's a huge amount to do and it is his main work. And so being the wife, even though I've got the same passion in many ways, I need to curb how much I do um, to enable him to do as much as he needs to do. So there's a bit of a tension there. But that's resolved in seeing that a lot of what I do in the home and supporting him does mean he can do it um, better. Mm. Mm. I think, uh, just to back up what Kathy has said, that whole idea of being on the same page together is just wonderful. Being involved in the same work together is just wonderful. Um, when I married Jim, and we've been in ministry a long time, uh, part of my responsibility is that I would be his helper. And it's wonderful that I get to be his helper, not just as his wife and as mother to our kids and things like that, but as the helper in this ministry. Um, I can actually work beside him, walk alongside him. I can be his sounding board when he comes home. Um, for otherwise, that might be difficult because they might not know very much about the work uh, that their husband's involved in. But because this is part of our life, this is our life, being involved in gospel ministry, I feel that uh, it's a great privilege to walk beside Jim uh, to be his helper in that sort of ministry. And as, and as Kathy said, um, there are a lot of difficulties involved in that, um, a lot of heartache um, in that I am, uh, in that when I do walk so closely beside him, I get to feel his heartache in ways that otherwise don't get to feel their husband's heartaches at work. And so sometimes I feel that immensely. Sometimes I want to go and hit somebody because of the way that they've criticised him or, or opposed him. But um, so. Yeah, there are some difficulties there as well as, well as, the, as, well as the joys. The thing that I find most helpful is um, communication. So actually having Andrew, when he comes home, talk about the stuff that he's doing and um, I guess his dreams and visions and understanding that, all of that actually helps me get on board with it. Um, in some ways I'm able to contribute to those visions. I'm able to get in, in into some of those ministries and help make them happen. But... There's many others that I can't be part of because someone needs to look after the kids and cook the meals. And so hearing from him and being able to um, be part of it in that way is really helpful. So I think that's, that's it. And also I really love it when he does encourage me in the things that I can do and do do. And so feeling like um, that's important to him and, and is part of, I'm part of the church and, and seem to be a valuable contributing member in that. It's, it's good to have that sense as well, not just that I'm his wife. I think I'd want to say to husbands that when you go to be the senior pastor of your church, you have this great role of, uh, of seeking to bring the gospel to a community and uh, you've got a, a job description, you've got um, tasks that you want to do. And sometimes for your wife, it's lonely. Um, she, she sometimes feels, I don't have anything regular to do, particularly if there are small children uh, that you have, and she's stuck at home, as it were. And sometimes it can be quite isolating for her. I think you need to watch her carefully, listen to her carefully, listen to those, those feelings of isolation and loneliness and not feeling connected to anyone, particularly if you go to a place where she doesn't have any friends. Um, and she's got to make those those connections herself. And sometimes um, she might not be as outgoing as you are. And uh, she'll be committed to the gospel, of course, but it can be a lot, it, it can be different for her than it is for you. And so just watching her carefully, listening to her, giving her space to make sure that she's nurtured. So, you know, once a year saying, yes, you'll have the kids for a couple of days while she goes off to a woman's conference somewhere. Maybe she might need to travel by plane, but letting her do that so that she develops as a person um, in her own right, just like you get to develop um, in other ways by coming to this conference. Maybe 
it's making sure that you put money aside to get some babysitters in so that she can come to the FIEC conference with you uh, will be an enormous benefit. I think it's great talking to other women and getting to hear the different ministries they're involved with, getting to hear what they're doing. Um, I think sharing each other's stories, uh, it's encouraging, but it's motivating, it's inspiring, gives me ideas, so I love that. Um, and the second thing I love is just hearing the stories of what uh, God is doing, hearing the gospel growing around the country, because everyone gets to stand up and talk about their church how, how how it's grown, what their hopes are for the next little while. And you just get, by the end of it, this amazing picture um, of, wow, an Australia-wide growth. It's so exciting. And I think when you're in your ministry, this keeps happening to me. It's happened to me this, this very week. I've been yesterday met with some people, heard some unhappy news, a good friend. She's committing adultery with someone else, the kids' ministry is, is hard to do and there's this thing not working and there's this person that's bringing you a lot of grief. You come here and you realise, hey, there's actually good news. These, it, it's not all bad and, in fact, it's not bad. God is growing his gospel. It really gives you that lift. And that, in turn, I think, then refreshes you to go back and keep doing what you're doing. Mm. It's great. Yeah, I think it's the for 51 weeks of the year, you're... You, you're consumed with what's going on in your little patch and coming to FIC lifts your eyes out of your little patch and says, there's a massive work going on across the country and uh, I'm so excited to be a partner with that. So it's that sense of partnership. I'm not just on my own. There are all these other church plants, all these other people um, and these other ministers' wives, these other pastors' wives who feel just like I do. I'm not alone in this. I actually have a heap of people that I can... Uh, that I can call, that I can talk to, and that um, I can, you know, mine their wealth of wisdom um, about what they've done in this situation or that situation or with this women's group or whatever. And uh, that's that's a great uh, blessing to have, a great resource to have.